How did you two meet? We met online on Match.com. And actually, Angie was the one who wrote me first. She was the one who found me, yep. which I wasn't used to because I was always a pursuer. The more I've gotten to know her, the, the more I see that she's just a beautiful person inside and out. But she's always been attractive to me, even when I first saw her picture on Match. Um, her eyes, everything. She's just really pretty. I just went to her first because she just, well, for one, she's beautiful. And she just sounded like a really interesting and fun person to get to know. And it turns out she is. Finding love was, is the best thing I ever did and get to do in my life because there, there's no, nothing else like it. When you have someone that you can share your day and night with and know that they're there for you and you're there for them and you have that closeness, there's nothing else like it. Welcome to SBSK. We believe that everybody has a story that's worthy of being heard. When we listen to one another, the world becomes a closer place and we all benefit together. So without hesitation, let's meet today's friend. Have you always believed you were worthy of love? I know I'm worthy of it. I just don't think people will see me the way I want to be seen. Do you remember your first thought when you saw her for the first time? I do. I remember thinking, wow, she's really pretty and I'm just really going to love her. I want to be seen as beautiful and loving and desirable and affectionate and smart. And people don't see that. They just see someone in a wheelchair. I think she's beautiful just the way she is, inside and out. And it's, I know this is cliche, but her personality drew me to her. And she's beautiful to boot. To boot so. Thanks, babe. I you're love welcome. You. What is your diagnosis? It is called osteogenesis imperfecta, brittle bone disease, and I have type 3. What's that mean? Um, well, osteogenesis imperfecta is a rare bone condition, causes bones to break easily due to lack of collagen in the bones. How many bones have you broken in your life? Oh gosh, I've had that question asked before, and I never have an answer. Um, well, I had 22 at birth. My mom delivered me naturally. Um, she did not know that I had it. But I would say probably over two or 300. What is it like to be both gay and have a disability? Uh, at first I didn't want to be gay. I tried to just ignore it. And you know, I chased after guys in school. What did you think the first time you saw Angie? I was nervous. Um, when she was walking up to me, I was nervous, but also excited. I was, I hoped she wanted to kiss at that moment, because I did. I wanted to be happy, and being happy is not hiding that part of you, at least for me. What did you think the first time you saw Haley? Um, I remember I had a big smile on my face. I was, I mean, I was already happy and nervous, but when I saw her the first time, I just, my whole face lit up, and I remember I was smiling from ear to ear. She was tinier than I thought she was in the pictures. On it, yeah, she's a little tinier, but still so cute and beautiful, just like in the pictures, and it was I'm, exciting. I'm glad she didn't turn around and walk away. No. <laughs> Did you fear that she might? You never know, yeah. Do you have any fears attached to your marriage with Angie? Of course I do. I always worry that, you know, I'm going to one day be too much for her or she's going to want more out of life, like travel more. Um, I don't know, do things that I can't do. 
I was very upfront, open with, you know, everything about myself before we met. That I had caregivers and that, you know, I can't walk and that I'm fragile and, you know, none of it seemed to scare her away. Nope. I just love her so much. She makes me happy. Um, and I'd do anything for her. I'd, I do what I have to do to make things work for her and to keep her safe and happy and to keep her laughing because that's her her best asset. I was the one who proposed to her actually and I was in the hospital actually. I went to visit her, it was our second meeting and I went to visit her and I had an accident where I unfortunately I fell off the toilet. Her caregiver had helped her into the restroom, and the caregiver and I were um, chat chatting in the in the bedroom while she was going to the restroom. And all of a sudden, we hear this big clunk. I had two broken legs, and my arm, and some fingers, and so I was in pretty bad shape. And all the blood ran out of the caregiver's face, and everything went into slow motion, and I was just. I don't know what I was thinking in the moment. I think I just went on autopilot. So I had to stay in the hospital up in Seattle for like a week. And I, she, Angie was there with me the whole time. And I, that surprised me because it was the start of our relationship and I'm glad I didn't scare her off with all that happening. It really, made me realize how strong of a person she really is and how much she's been through and how much she had to have gone through in her whole life and come out of all that pain and everything she's been through and she's still happy, bubbly, fun person. I knew that I wanted to spend my life with her at that point because it kind of reminded me like life is precious like why wait? Her caregiver at the time said, this is what it's like. This is what you're going to have to deal with. Um, basically, she said, if you can't handle it, try. maybe you should move on. And that didn't scare me away. I proposed to her in the hospital. I, it wasn't planned. It was just in that moment, I just did it. It was spontaneous. I didn't expect it. I was like, are you serious right now? What's, <laughs> what kind of drugs did they give you? <laughs> Um, I was a little shocked, but I, I, there was no hesitation. I immediately said, yes, yes, I want to marry you. It just felt like a dream was coming true. And Angie is everything I want in a partner. I, I don't know how to explain it. I just knew. Does your pup help with your anxiety? He does. Yeah, he really does. Tell me a little bit about your anxiety. Um, well, I mostly have social anxiety, which is a constant irrational fear of people worried about what people thinking of me all the time. Um, and so when I'm around people, even if it's people I know, I get really nervous. If you could record a message for Angie she would always have with her, what would you say? I would say, hi honey, I love you. And even when your days get tough and dark and sad, and angry. Just know that you're enough. You're enough for me, and you're enough for your family, and there's so many people out there that love you and are proud of you. She just gets it. She knows. Um, and I know she could just walk up to me at any moment and hug me. She would. Oh yeah, all the time. Um, but it's Probably too much. It's just a relief to just know that somebody gets it, that she understands, and it's just like, okay, I can breathe, and I don't have to feel so bad for freaking out sometimes. She seems to just get it when, um, when, when I need space, like I don't have to tell her or explain it to her. She just, she knows. She knows when to um, either back away or help. Are you able to cuddle or spoon? No. Not really, no. Um, I mean, we cuddle if we're laying down, but we don't spoon. Um, sometimes if she's like hugging me in bed, 
Like I feel a bit squished. I worry that she might find another gal that can keep up with her and doing those, those things. Holding hands is one of my favorite things to do. Why? Because I, I can't run up to her and give her a big old bear hug or pick her up and swing her around or, you know, do those happy lovey-dovey things that couples do. We can't do that. So a uh, handhold is a really sure way to show our love and our affection. And I'm glad she likes to do it as much as I do. Are you both okay with the physical level of intimacy you've achieved in your relationship? Yes. I am. Yes, because she's able, she's able to show her love in so many ways um, that aren't, they're not typical. Um, but, no, they're not typical, but... Um, but she shows me her love so much, and that's all I need is just love. And Sometimes I do worry, like, am I enough for her in that way, though? That is another worry of mine. But I just reassure her that it's okay. If you could record a message about Haley that she could play at any time, what would you say? I would say, honey, you are an amazing human being. And at first when we started dating, I didn't want Andrew to do any of my personal care because I want to keep that separate. But, you know, when she moved in, um, you know, just... She wanted to help. It's kind of natural more and, that more and more and more. I would take on some of the duties. And I didn't, I didn't want to put that on her. I didn't want to impose that on her. I'm so grateful to you for helping me learn and grow and learn a lot of stuff about myself. At first it was tough because, you know, I don't want my spouse wiping my butt and you know, doing that stuff, because it's not very glamorous. Um, you want to keep that separate from your spouse. Uh, but I had to realize that if she's going to be my, my wife, that she's going to have to... Well, she doesn't have to, but... If we want to be close and go be alone sometimes, that those things are going to need to be done. I'm grateful that you're there with me every step of the way. And I will always be there for you every step of the way. Why is it important to talk about your insecurities? To, just to be up front with each other. Put yeah. it all out on the table right up front. So um, I think it's just healthier in a relationship to do that because... You, when you hide it from your partner, um, things can get tricky because you don't understand why they're going through what they're going through. Mm -hmm. We have a YouTube channel. It's called Angie and Haley Present. So I hope if you'd like to, please follow us. Link's in the description below. Yes. This is what love looks like, and you too can find love. Yes. And, yeah. And peace and love. And peace and love. <laughs> Thanks for watching SBSK. Click subscribe here to be part of our community. Then hit the notification bell below so you never miss a story. You can even meet another friend here. See you next time.